Let me tell you a little story about plagiarism. <laughs> I knew a guy one day, and uh, this guy uh, was going to a very famous institution of higher learning. I will not go any further. Anyway, he had a perpetually worried look. I noticed this, and other people who knew him knew it. That worried look was always there, and yet he seemed to be on the top of the world. And one day, over coffee and a little joint down in the village, he looked at me and says, I'm going to tell you something. I said, what's the trouble? What's bugging you? You could just see it was bugging me, so I'm going to tell you. I've got a terrible thing to tell you. I said, what? He said, well, he said, you know, I'm rotten. I said, you are? Said, yes, I'm rotten. I said, in what way are you rotten? And, you know, everybody's rotten in some way. What way are you rotten that's bugging you more than other people? He says, well, I'll tell you this. Ever since I was a little kid, see, I like to draw. But I could never draw anything good. I just draw. I copy stuff. Draw things. And I always wanted to be an artist. Be able to, you know, make these great paintings. And he said, one day in school, I'm walking around, and there was a note on the bulletin board that they're having a competition. It's a competition to uh, enter uh, an art competition in school there. So, so all you have to do is submit your painting and uh, maybe you'll win. So I said, what the heck? So I went back to my pad. I sat around and thought about it. I took out some oils and some watercolors and some ink and stuff and I started to draw things. He says, but I, I, I can never think of anything original to draw. He says, everything I draw... I copy. So since I was a little kid, I've been copying stuff out of magazines and stuff. So I keep drawing. It's about one o'clock in the morning. And he says, I got this record player in the pad there. And I got about 5,000 records I've been collecting ever since I was a kid. You know, all kinds of LPs. He's a real nutty jazz fan. He says, so uh, I go over and I put some LPs on the, on the record table. When all of a sudden, I see this dust jacket from this record. And it's an old record. So I had that record around the house like maybe nine years. You know, it's an old battered dust jacket. It probably didn't sell five copies. It was a, you know, it's a Joe Rinky Dink and the seven Mississippi feet warmers. You know, some outfit that you know, nobody ever heard of and never will hear of again. You know, they're all working in the insurance business now. And he says, and there was this beautiful picture on the cover of the dust jacket. So I took it out. And I thought, well, I'll get myself in the mood of painting, see, if I, if I uh, maybe copy this thing. I'll just do a little copy. He says, so I'm copying in the way there. He says, I got this nice big piece of canvas and I copy it with charcoal. And then I start mixing the colors and I'm painting this thing. He says, I'm copying it right off the dust jacket. He says, the only difference is, he says, I'm making it about five times bigger than it was on the dust jacket. See, I'm painting away. This is a true story, Bob. He says, I'm painting away there. And he says, and by 3 o'clock in the morning, it was done. Beautiful. There it's, you know, boy, what a beautiful thing. So, so by that time, I put the record away, you know, there it's sitting there. I'm waiting for it to dry. Well, the next day, one of my buddies comes into the room there. He's going to borrow a book. And he sees my painting up there on top of the bookcase seat. And he looks at it and says, hey, Fred. That, by the way, is not his real name. Hey, Fred. Boy, is that a great painting. Where did you get that? And then he walked up closer and he saw that the paint was wet on it. He says, for crying out loud, this is a new oil painting. Who done it? This is an institution of higher learning. Who done it? And he said, there. Instantly, I was given the great choice. I was given the choice that man is always faced with. Do I tell him the truth? Or do I... Milk it for what it's worth. Well, Fred didn't know anything about art. I knew that. And Fred hated music. I knew that. So instantly my brain says, milk it. And so I turned to Fred and said, oh, it's something I just tossed off. I, last night I couldn't sleep. I painted it. I paint a little bit. And Fred says, no kidding. That's great. Why? 
That, that, that painting is fantastic. Why, that's a beautiful painting. How come I never knew you painted? Well, I don't do it much. I don't have much time to do it. I just painted it. <laughs> and so his friend goes rushing out. And five minutes later, four more guys come back. He goes down to the coffee shop and says, Hey, you ought to see that painting this guy's got in his room. And they come and they're knocking on the door. And these guys come in. By then, there I am, you know, there's, a, he, there's my friend. And so these guys come running and say, Hey, we want to see your painting, Fred. He says, Oh, it's up there. He says, I, I, I you know, I just, uh, I used to do that when I was a kid. I don't do that. I, I, he says, By now I'm trying to play it down. See, uh, I don't do it much anymore. Just play around. And the four guys stood there with their mouths hanging open. Absolutely aghast at my great painting, which I had copied from a dust jacket, stroke for stroke, line for line. He said, I did everything ex you, except use transfer paper. <laughs> there it was. And he says, the four of them were gassed. And out they go. He says, so, so I figured, well, oh, it's cool. I won't say any more about it now. It's absolutely cool. He says, so I stuck it up back in the radiator and uh, proceeded to go about my business. A couple of days go by, and he says, By George, they, one day there's a note in my mailbox. They wanted to see me down at the college paper. He says, oh, the college paper? Who do I know? Says, no, it says, please come to, the, come to the paper office down there. You know, the Daily Bugle. So I says, all right, you know, I say, gee, maybe they want me to write sports or something. So he goes down to the Daily Bugle, and here is sitting a guy with a tape recorder, and he says, uh, you're Fred, aren't you? And I says, yes, I am Fred. I, Fred. Well, we'd like to interview you about your paintings. My what? He says, about your paintings. We've been hearing a lot of talk about the, your, your, how, what a great painter you are. Well, uh, I just do it. And he's got the tape recorder going. He says, I just do it. That's it. And, uh, once in a while, I'll... He says, oh, boy, I'm sick now by now. You know, I figured, uh, I'll be very... He says, I'll be very ambiguous on the interview. I just... You know, I fool around. I don't paint. I not really. I just play around with oils. I don't paint. He says, never once did I say I actually painted. I don't. I just fool around. And the guy says, well, gee, uh, you, very, very interesting. Uh, why is it you're not in fine arts here at the university? Oh, I'm, I'm not that good. I just... And then came the crusher. The guy says, what do you mean not that good? Why, half of the guys that have seen your paintings is better than anything the fine arts department's done in 20 years. Well, well, that's nothing at all. Well, he said this thing began to snowball. It began to snowball. He says, like a giant avalanche coming down out of the Alps somewhere. And the next thing I knew, he says, there are guys coming in to see my painting, and by George, it is now entered in the painting contest. So I figured, well, first of all, I've never won anything in my life. He's believed me, I could enter the Mona Lisa in a painting contest, and it would come back rejected. He said, I've never won anything in my life. So I figured, well, this, that's going to end it. See, so now it's in the contest. That's the end of it. it. At least it was out of my room. It was out of my sight, and I could sleep nights. He said, would you believe it? Two weeks later, it is announced in the Daily Bugle on the front page with big letters, Fred wins painting contest. But there is a picture of my painting right there in the paper. Oh, he says, oh, my God. Oh, now what do I do? He says, not only did I win, I won $1,000. 1,000 smelolians. 1,000 buckaroonies. Oh, what do I do now? After you've gone, oh, what do I do now? And then they called me down to the fine arts department. And they presented me with a check for $1,000. The dean did. And everybody's applauding and cheering. And they take pictures for the paper. He says there were newspapers that came from as far north as Augusta, Maine. There were newspapers from Charlotte, North Carolina. There were guys from radio stations. And they gave me a check for $1,000. And there I was standing next to my rotten, crummy painting that I copied off the dust jacket of a miserable LP that I once bought for 98 cents in a record hunter. Oh, what am I going to do now? <laughs> you don't want to hear the rest of this story because it is downhill all the way from this moment, friends. <laughs>